New Zealander Liam Lawson took another step towards a 2025 F1 drive last Thursday, with the 22-year-old completing a filming day for Red Bull in its RB20 at a wet Silverstone. Lawson is currently sister squad RB's reserve, but can walk from the brand if he's not given a race drive for 2025, with Sauber understood to be in talks with his management as the primary alternative. F1 teams are allocated two filming days a year, each with 200 kilometers of running, giving Lawson 33 laps, and the team enough data to make a decision on his future, though no times have been released. Red Bull top gun Max Verstappen has revealed he's struggling with vision issues, dating back to his crash at the 2021 British Grand Prix. Silverstone was a huge flashpoint in Verstappen's battle for his maiden world championship against his Mercedes rival Sir Lewis Hamilton, with the lap one contact at turn nine sending the Dutchman into the barriers for a high-speed 51G crash. Verstappen got out of his car unaided and was then taken to hospital for checks, but some three years and three titles later, the 26-year-old still feels the effects of the huge shunt. Since my Silverstone crash, I've been struggling with visibility problems, especially on undulating circuits or those with lots of advertising boards along the side of the track, he said. XF1 driver Alex Wurz says McLaren is still getting to grips with its recent return to the front of the grid and is beating itself up about its British Grand Prix loss as a motivational tool for future success. McLaren was top scorer in Silverstone, but it failed both drivers' bids to win the race, with conservative calls that left each out a lap too late, while its rivals pounced for position. Lando Norris felt dejected to finish third, having led for 20 laps, but Wurtz, in a chat with official podcast F1 Nation, says disappointment is a positive. They've got something the other two teams don't have which is the spirit of, let's say, the new kids on the block. Because McLaren had a long period of small hopes, but um, not being there. And they have proven with the turnaround last year and this year on each and every circuit to be competitive. I think they're purposely hard on themselves, which is a form of motivating, which is a form of asking the team, hey, let's roll the sleeves up even one more turn because the competition is so tough. They know they have to do that. Ex-Grand Prix driver David Coulthard has urged Carlos Sainz to prioritize performance over cash and stability with his next contract. Sainz is a free agent at the end of the year, but has taken an extended period to make a decision, with the wait said to have cost him his chance with Williams, while discussions continue with Sauber and Alpine. But Coulthard, in a chat with F1's official podcast Beyond the Grid, says Sainz should focus on choosing the fastest car. I would definitely, with his talent and his age and everything, I would go for performance. I would go for whatever car next year I believe is going to give me performance on track. I would not think about 2026 because nobody knows. Whatever the rumours are, you know, rumours that Mercedes have the best engine, rumours that Red Bull have a problem, all of these things. Williams chief James Vowles has admitted that the historic British squad is continually evaluating the need for a mid-season driver change, with Logan Sargent's F1 career on the line. The American has struggled to match teammate Alex Albon across his one and a half seasons, with the Floridian nil to 33 in qualifying, three to 25 in races, and down 30 on points. But while Sargent, who hasn't always had the same spec car as Albon, has vowed to fight until the end, the squad has stated it's focused on a bigger name for a long-term lineup. While Mercedes junior Andrea Kimi Antonelli waits in the wings for a potential 10-race startup before returning to the work squad for 2025. There will be a line in the sand where we have to make a decision, and at that point, both for 2025 and maybe for something this year, we'll make a decision on it, Val said.
Mercedes says that it's not done winning in 2024, with more performance to come to its W15 car via upgrades at each of the coming doubleheader races in Hungary and Belgium. The Silver Arrows have secured the last two straight wins with George Russell in Austria and Sir Lewis Hamilton at Silverstone, which it says was an important result with Mercedes determined to go out on a high with Hamilton to cap off an historic partnership. But Mercedes' longtime trackside engineering director Andrew Shovlin says the works outfit isn't about to sit on its laurels with 12 rounds to go. Hopefully, there's more wins to come this season, though. We're not happy with, we're not happy with two. We want to go after more, so we're still working hard. We've got, we've got performance to come, we're trying to bring that to the car as quickly as we can. It won't be easy, but we will, we will be pushing all the way. Formula One wet appetites for the 2025 season last week with the release of the sprint calendar that will see the action-packed format again grace six events from March through to November. F1 will again have its first sprint in China next year, followed by Miami, but will swap Austria for a trip to Belgium next time around, with Austin, Brazil and Qatar rounding out the hosts. And the sports power brokers remain keen to grow the format, though it's yet to suggest a target number for sprints. As we prepare to celebrate our 75th anniversary in 2025, we will always honor our incredible history, but we must always be looking ahead, innovating, and improving to deliver the best for our growing and diverse fan base, said F1 CEO Stefano Domenicali. Goodwood, home to the Duke of Richmond and Lennox, was the place to be last weekend. And the focus was on Red Bull, which brought the single biggest display of F1 cars to the estate to celebrate its milestone 20 years racing at the pinnacle of motorsport. The brand had its own paddock and no shortage of star cars and drivers, from its first pairing of David Coulthard and Christian Kleen, through to its latest in Max Verstappen and Sergio Perez all got a run up the famous hill, including team boss Christian Horner, who hadn't been behind the wheel of a Grand Prix car since 1993, before a final procession of its F1 cars, the largest ever at the Festival of Speed. Well, Sebastian Vettel unfortunately couldn't make it, so, uh, so, so the team asked if I'd jump in his place. So uh, having never driven a Red Bull car before, it was a, a huge, hugely uh, proud moment to drive a car that had been designed and built by all the men and women in Milton Keynes and, and we won our championship with in, in 2012. Um, so a very special moment to, and to see all the cars lined up and it was a great moment. Red Bull wowed the crowds at Goodwood last weekend beyond its own 20 years in F1 celebrations with the unveiling of its stunning Grand Prix car for the road, the RB17. Striking sleek lines and astonishing performance define Adrian Newey's final engineering project with the energy drinks giant, which team boss Christian Horner says features the greatest hits from the design legend's wheelhouse as his legacy to the brand. Just 50 cars are to be made, with Red Bull making use of its F1 suppliers and manufacturing process for a price tag of 7.7 .7 million US dollars and owners provided access to the F1 team simulators, vehicle program development, and on-track training. For Newey, it was about creating the ultimate track car, fusing his design expertise and own time behind the wheel, with aircraft-level downforce to drag ratio and prodigious power that will raise the bar for performance on track beyond its storied mark rivals. If you like, the key, key numbers for the car are 1,000 horsepower from the V10, uh, 250 horsepower from the electric motor, so a combined output of around 1250. Uh, in its lightest form, 875 kilos, um, ready to go. Thanks for watching. To stay up to speed on all things Formula One, make sure you hit the subscribe button.